we're back. Good to be back. And this time talking about the book, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And um, we would start with, with the first agreement that he lays out. Okay. Which is to be impeccable with your word. So be impeccable with your word. And that's something that you should live by, according to the ancient Toltec wisdom. What do you? What does that mean to you? Well, you start. You read the book recently. So, <clears throat> well, to me, to be impeccable with your word is to always tell the truth and stand by it. And I, I saw a uh, a post one time on social media that said the truth is like a a lion. Uh, no one needs to defend it. Wow. It defends itself, you know. And, um, yeah, to me, be impeccable with your word means do your best <clears throat> to stand by what is true. And um, I think that it starts with a little fib, a little lie. And if you're not careful... Before you know it, you're lying about everything, <laughs> right? I think. So if you do, and I think someone was explaining to me how uh, you get involved in like, it was a situation with, a, there was a mafia involved or a cartel or something, and this person was doing work for them, for the mafia. And it was like, how did that person get involved so deep in that? And the person responded and said, it starts with a small favor that they ask you for. Hey, can you go to take this over there? Not a big deal. And then you get pulled in. And I think that's how it is with with the our words and the truth. And uh, even though it's difficult, and we were having this conversation earlier today, sometimes telling the truth to those you love is a it's difficult to hear or to give that that information. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if you believe it to be true, then you should say it, right? Yeah, what happened this morning was um, it was a family member telling someone else something that was difficult to digest, and he said, "Look, it's communication. The easiest thing sometimes proves itself to be the most difficult." Um, we were having a cup of coffee earlier this morning, and when he said that, maybe because of the way what he had said before, where this particular family member was opening up and saying, I really um, essentially am jealous. Envy, envy yeah, you. Yeah. I envy what you've. I envy what you have done with this, this, and this. What you've accomplished. Yeah. And open himself up to. Right. Let him know, because apparently the uh, relationship was deteriorating. Yeah. It was very interesting because I liked it. You know, it, it really impacted me tremendously to the point that I wrote it down because he said right after that, well, sometime, communication, sometimes the easiest thing to do ends up being the hardest. Right. It's never easy to open up to somebody, maybe, to be b vulnerable, especially if you feel that they're going to retaliate for something that you say. It takes a lot of guts. Absolutely. A lot of guts. But at the end of the day, I think you, you come out on top. Um. <laughs> because I'm just, I'm thinking like, I remember in... Uh, maybe, maybe. Maybe not always. No. You know, in a, in like a business setting. You're not going to come out on top. But in this you, case, it was a family member, and I know I interrupted you. Excuse me for a second. But um, depending on how gracious the host is, because you're letting him have it. In a business setting, you think you're going to come up on top? I uh, think at the end of the day, like I know in my career, I've made mistakes. We and, all and, and some of the people on my team have made mistakes. But for me, I remember, you know, numerous times, uh, but one time in particular, calling the customer and saying, hey, you know what, this was something that we made an error on. 
and taking responsibility for it and just being truthful oh. because the worst thing I w would do is blame it on somebody else. I'd rather just say, you know what, I messed up in the quote that I gave you and at the time it was in the life insurance world. I made a mistake. I punched something wrong. I remember one time this was a very difficult, very difficult situation because I had, uh, I had, I had misquoted this person, and in a life insurance quote, uh, I I don't remember if it was a misquote on the gender, because that affects life insurance, whether you're quoting a male or a female. Men have always been more expensive to get life insurance than women, because mortality tables show that women tend to outlive men. Yeah. Same health, let's say the exact same health uh, status. Well, this time I had, I think I punched the age wrong and age is a factor on life insurance. And I think instead of, let's say, you know, 47, I had typed in 43 and I had to go back to them. And I remember this was a really hard conversation because I said, you know what? I made a mistake in the quote. I typed in the wrong age for your husband and I put in 43 instead of 47. The premium, the monthly payment is actually... Three hundred dollars more. Woo. You know, it was it was a it was a big difference, and we ended. But they appreciated that I called them back right away and told them. Because another way of going about could have been, you know, we're talking about being impeccable with your word, and also, do you have a conscience? Can you sleep at night? That's one thing. But another thing, I could have said, hey, you know what? There was a glitch in the system. Blah blah blah. Uh, the price is actually this and never taking responsibility. And I feel that would have chipped away at my character because it was not the truth. Okay. Well, if you have these standards that you live by, which is good that you do, I'm proud of you. Uh, always telling the truth is the best avenue to proceed on. Um, but you're not going to end on top always. No. Because it depends on how gracious... The in, host is. Because but in the long run is what I'm saying. Like each battle, oh. maybe you lose the battle. But in the war of life, don't you think that you live a better life? Maybe not. No, no, I do agree with you. But a lot of people might not take responsibility because they are afraid. Of the repercussions. Right. Because that person could have ripped you into pieces. And it's happened. For being so incompetent. For and, putting in the wrong age. How on earth do you do that? How long have you been in business? Are you a ridiculous man? Cancel my policy immediately. Exactly. I mean, they could... And I had that. I had situations <clears throat> like that happen also. This couple was very understanding. But yeah, I also had situations like that happen where they were not happy and you lose the policy. Oh. But you keep your standards. But you lose it after you get... Destroyed. You know, destroyed. Mangled. Like a, it's happened to me. I'll tell you, it builds character. You know that about it. But believe me, once that <laughs> happens and that customer said, <clears throat> destroys you, takes you to the floor, believe me, you're going to be a lot more careful next time you punch in the birthday on a quote. So you need to go through that. You come out on top at the end of the day. You're I, more careful. I agree. Just my thought on it. But what, uh, where have you seen this in your in business, in life, being a... A, a tested or a challenge for you because what does impeccable mean to you well i really like your definition of it it goes with the book it's always telling the truth but to me it also means you have to be very careful with every word that you utter because especially when you're doing business you just have to be so careful and I'm seeing it more and more with all the contracts that we're doing in, uh, in real estate. It's actually a learning experience daily, you know? Yeah. You think that everything is running good and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, out of the blue, something pops up and you have to deal with it. And the way you deal with it shows the level of maturity, experience, uh, your character, everything that goes with it. Like, for example, um, was it this morning? The days are going by so quickly. I, <laughs> I don't think it was this morning. It was yesterday. It was yesterday. I got off the phone 
with another agent because after escrow closed, something popped up. And the agent is saying, hey, um, we need to make sure that they're going to do this uh, properly because if they're just going to do a little thing and it doesn't... Some repair. Some jive. And because of the way that you and I behave through the entire escrow process, everything that we said came true. Everything that we said that we would do, we did. So we came out as professionals and so did they. So did they. So did they. They were great. They were great. And the outcome is a beautiful young family moving into a beautiful place. It's wonderful. Okay? Everybody's happy. Because there's a lot of games that are played. A lot. But that didn't happen here. No. But after the closing... An issue pops up. Out of the blue from nowhere. Not the other side, not us. We didn't create this issue. It was a third party. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway. And so what I said to nip it in the butt was, listen, whatever we're going to do, whatever gets done, it will be done in a professional manner that will let every will appease everyone yeah and that was all i needed to say yeah. because even though it's been what two months uh of these adventures that we've dealt never once did we falter nor they they correct and i i think one of the um things that i've learned from you in dealing with difficult situations is you attack it head on you rather give the person the hard truth and just get it done with instead of like prolonging something and that's something I've struggled with is if there's something difficult I need to encounter in the past I would try and let some time go by and not address it it only builds up uh huh and it just and it's on your mind that's the biggest thing it's on your mind and it's taking up space for that should be used it's like when you have a bunch of windows open in the computer your computer's slower but if you have only one window open it's it's a fast computer that's a, that's amazing that you're absolutely right yeah so when there's difficult situations what i learned from you is deal with those difficult situations head on immediately get it done and move on right and you're able to be efficient that way absolutely i agree even in even when you gotta give somebody maybe not bad news, because I like what uh, Marcus Aurelius says. He says nothing is good or bad; it just is. Wow! So any situation, I like that. It just is. Mm -hmm. Something pops up; it is. It's not bad news. It's not good news necessarily. It's just news. We put on that news our own uh, beliefs. And uh, what is the word I'm looking for when you have your own values? Your own values. Your own value system. But don't do that. Just take the information as it is. And uh, you're really good at delivering the information. And, uh, and people, I think, admire that. Even though the information, they receive it a certain way, you can't control how they receive it. You can try to put it nicely. But at the end of the day, you can't control how they react. Um, so you just deliver the message. That's all we can do. The sooner you do it, the better, especially if it's a little bump in the road. You don't want that thing to grow. Yeah. And Like a tumor. And, yeah, and become a, a major obstacle. So you want to... And, and the one thing that I've learned over the years is that if you postpone giving, let's say, ba bad news... Okay, whatever it may be. It's not good or bad, it just is. I really like that. Okay, but let's say that you give the information. Okay, uh, and everything stops, and the deal is dead, and the deal dies. Okay, potentially the same thing would have happened even if you prolong it. Okay, and you don't tackle it head on and, and worse and now you've suffered all this stuff because yeah. you're trying to figure out how to do it so the best way to do it is hey guys look what happened yeah this is it and uh if it's your fault you gotta own up to it 
and say, it was my fault. How do we resolve it? What do you want me to do? How would you feel comfortable handling this? Right. Let's solve this. Let's solve the issue. You know? And I think you're, we were talking about like a sixth sense, right? We were uh, earlier today. Right. How it's, there's, there's, a, there's the feeling that you have in your gut. And when you're being genuine with somebody, I think they can, we can, un, we feel that. Right. Hey, you know what? He's delivered this information, but he's being genuine. And I, my gut feeling tells me it's coming from a good place or whatever. And that we don't really sometimes trust that sixth sense that we have, which is our gut feeling, basically, you know? Right. Um, and we should. We should. Uh, I think in, in the four agreements where he's talking, this is ancient wisdom, right? That was passed down by right, right. the shamans of uh, the Toltecs. And, and um, I think that... It's a really good thing to live by. I know you've written these down before a bunch of times. I think maybe you even have some st stickers. I, or I do. You, you write them down like on the fridge. I see you put notes and stuff. But to be impeccable with your word, I think if you can remind yourself every day of this agreement. And the reason why he says it's an agreement is because uh, Don Miguel Ruiz is sharing the teachings that... Mm -hmm. Basically, when we're born, we're given, we're put on um, by our parents, by religion, by the school system, by society, all of these uh, ways of thinking that we never actually chose. Like, you know, why are you Catholic, Jewish, Muslim? Like, why are you that religion? Well, a lot of times it's because my parents, my grandparents, unless... You went and you, you sought out that religion. Why do you believe this way? So what he's saying is basically wipe yourself clean of all of, uh, all of the thoughts that you have and these preconceived ideas because they were put onto you when you were being programmed from the age of zero to seven and make new agreements which are these. And these are the four that he's talking about. And he, I know he has other books like The Fifth Agreement. And, but... Um, Basically, he's saying unlearn those ways and then choose what, how you want to live your life. Wow. It's I mean, pretty it's, cool. It's deep. I mean, it's difficult to unlearn something. Whether, I mean, yeah. Especially you, if since you were a kid. Well, you, these are your, let's say, beliefs. And how do you do that? How do you wipe that slate clean to start anew? It's it's got to be difficult. You got to really have a lot of introspection too. Yeah. And do a, I I would say grow grow as a human being. And I mean, but telling the truth is easier. You know, I read before. You know, every time you tell a lie, you have to remember that you told that lie. Yeah. And you have to remember who you told that to. It might have been more than one person, so two or three. Now you got to keep that logged in, and then now you got to. Potentially, if you're asked on it again, you have to come up with more lies, and then you have to keep track of those. So, uh, <laughs> where where does it end? When do you come clean? It's it reminds me of the guy that says, you know, I've heard <laughs> I've heard this in a joking fashion, and I, and I agree with that. But it's like uh, somebody I've heard somebody say, oh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't have any. Uh, I'm married, and I don't have any girlfriends, or this or that, or anything. I got enough. You know, problems with one, you know, that, that kind of concept. Like, the idea is, like, you would have to keep track of all the things going on. Oh, God. That's not a life that they even want to mess with. No. Just, just deal with the one person in your life and be married and be happy. Something like right, that. Right, right. That's funny. But, uh, yeah, the same thing goes with all these lies. You have to keep track of them. Oh, yeah. And that's not a good place to be. The other thing you know, that I was thinking of is being impeccable. So being truthful is a done deal. But also being accurate. Being impeccable with what you say. Like you say precise. You have to be precise in your speech. You know? You have to be precise in your speech. So that there's no room for error. There's no um, interpretation 
of what you're trying to, to say. Because so many times... Misinterpretation. Yeah, okay, misinterpretation. Uh, because a lot of times we say something to each other and I'm done speaking and the other guy doesn't know exactly what I meant. Mm. And so we have to be as precise as possible. And, you know, um, it takes a lot of energy and effort to put it together so that it, uh, you know, but nothing beats being direct and honest and truthful. Nothing beats that. That's... A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I think if you're trying to convey a message um, and you're talking about being impeccable so they actually understand what you're trying to say, communication is an art. You say it all the time. Yeah. Not everybody. But stories are one of the best way. Right. And that's how history has been passed down before we had the written word. It was in stories. And uh, Graham Hancock talks about it. And... Uh, this is how we would convey a message. And like, if you look at the, whether it's the Bible or any other religious Correct. text, it's all stories. Right. Right. You know, or most of them. I mean, the Bible in particular, I know it's just fables. And through those fables, they're, te they're teaching something. Correct. Correct. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, and you know, uh, that's why there are some books in the Indian language, I think they're called Vedas, and um, they would put to writing, I don't, maybe 6,000 years ago or something like that, but they actually are much, much older than that. And the way it was passed down from generation to generation was in the spoken word in the form of stories. Yeah. And so there was this guy that had a PhD. Or songs. Or songs, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, songs. And there was this guy that they were interviewing, and he had a PhD, and he's uh, from India. Uh, and he's very renowned. I don't remember his name right now, but he we'll was... We'll look him up. We'll, we'll, we'll look him up. So he was saying, um, the Vedas uh, have been in existence for so long, then when they actually put it to writing, okay, other people that have come to try to interpret them, they have said, we better not change not one word. We better not change not one word because out of respect for the traditional hand-me-down of the spoken word, whether it be through stories or songs, right? They hold that so dear to the... And I, I find that absolutely, I love it. So they didn't even and, bother to translate it. Well, no, they have translated it, but they haven't changed the meanings or the words. It, I think it's been translated oh, too see. many. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like to modern language. Exactly the way they had, uh, you know, uh, described it. Right. That's exactly how they it was put down on paper. Got it. And if somebody else comes over, comes by two thousand years later or a thousand years later, because these things are super old. I think they're over six thousand years old. They're called the Vedas. Um, and they said, "Oh, you know what? That's not what they exactly meant to say. We don't care. That's what they said. Leave it alone. Now you can interpret it any way you want to, but this is what. so they." have come to a consensus in India. We're not going to change not one word. I, I, I have a tremendous respect for the culture that can do something like that. I mean... That's, a, that's amazing. Oh, and and it go, it's like... Can I love you imagine the if those people were not impeccable with their word? Like the people who, who wrote, you know, who, who were sharing the story over thousands of years... And then eventually it gets written down 6,000 years ago. Can you imagine if they were not impeccable Can with their imagine? word? Can you imagine? So if they were impeccable with their word, that's being passed down. Because we think, oh, something we say, the people will hear it, forget it. We're thinking our lifetime. We're not thinking like this is going to be seen 6,000 years later. Right. Right. That's amazing. Oh. Um, but India is a, a country full of enigmas and mysteries and oh my god it's incredible you know so is china uh, um, the chinese culture is tremendous also yeah i mean you're talking about cultures that go 
uh, you know, it, it's... Way back. Way back. Yeah. Uh, the Ming Dynasty and all this kind of stuff, and they, a lot of them wrote it down. You know, you're talking about going back in history, we're, we're getting a little bit off, of, but the Cuneo-type Cunea, uh, form of writing, supposedly the Sumerians, you know, were the first ones. You're talking 6,000 years ago. To actually write. write down on, you know, on clay, and then they fired those clays and turned them into tablets, and then they found these twenty to 30,000 tablets in uh, uh, Iraq. Uh, in two different palaces. Uh, one of them was the uh, Arshibanabal Palace, 20,000 tablets or something like that. Wow. It's tremendous. And you got this historic, and those, those people were impeccable <laughs> with their word. I would, I would think so. Yeah, they put it down to writing, whether you liked it, you liked it, you liked it, you liked it, this is what happened, let's write this down. Yeah. It's, it's tremendous. I, yeah, but being truthful, honest, direct, attack the problem immediately. Otherwise, it's not going to go away on its own, and uh, then most you, likely. And it's going to grow. The oh, closer yeah. you get to, yeah, it's going to grow because and then the, it feeds itself. Then you build a reputation of somebody who, you know what, I don't always get the best, I don't get the response I want from Pablo, let's say, always, but I'm going to get the truth. Yeah. And that's very, very valuable. It is. It like is. You got a call today during lunch and you told that, that person, family friend, something that, you know, you say, hey, open your mind <laughs> in oh. the way you're approaching this because it's not only that way. You might be right, but it's not only that way. But uh, here's what it is. And you hit him over the head with it in a nice way. And then he really appreciated it. Well, sure. And that's why people call you. Yeah. Because they know that they're going to get the truth. The, or At least that's what we strive for. Right. They're going to get what I think it's, it's going on. What I think is going on. I'm transparent as can possible. Look, you got to enjoy your days every day. It's a short term. <laughs> it's a short ride. <laughs> it's a short ride. It reminds me of uh, in uh, Universal Studios. You wait in line for this you know, hour, hour and a half. And I remember there was this one particular ride, a new ride, Harry Potter, at Harry Potter. Not the main one, but the, the small one. I kid you not, it was less than 30 seconds. <laughs> and we waited over an hour for it. And it's like this, <laughs> done. And it was like, that's life. Well, let me share this and then we can wrap it up if you like. You know, Hussein Bolt is supposed oh, yeah. to be the fastest man alive or was you know I, i'm not staying up on this at one point he was he may still be there right it, but there's a saying out there um that he uh expressed to someone i think he said i worked out for seven years to run this 30 sec uh, for this two minute run or he worked out either seven or nine years for this two-minute run. I mean, the dedication, the devotion, the hardship, the relentlessness, the, you know, I mean, yeesh. That's, that's an amazing uh, perspective. These athletes, what they go through, I would, you, it, not every one of them gets a gold medal, but man, they each and every one of them get my admiration. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a sacrifice that they go through. They show up every day. And uh, that's something I respect a lot when I see people who are physically fit. A fit. I respect that a lot because I say at least, at least, I don't know how they're doing in other things in their life, but at least in this, they have discipline. Right, right. Because there's no injection, a pill. There's no fast way to get a physique like that. Can you enhance it with things? Sure. But you still need to go. I've even heard Rogan and some other guys say, uh, bodybuilders, they say, look, um, this person is taking probably a, a supplement, a, some, a, steroids some. or something. Okay. Like uh, that more plates, more dates guy. He says, uh, this guy's probably taking something, but it doesn't take away the fact that he's also extremely 
strong and disciplined and fit and extremely careful with his diet and extremely oh he works out three times a day he's also taking something but it doesn't take away from the other thing it's it's an enhancer but you can't just get that body by injecting something right right you got to have discipline and and then on top of that they they <laughs> want to go to a level that is not human anymore <laughs> You know, basically that's what it seems. You want to be like Mr. Olympia. Wow. And unfortunately, sometimes in that world, it's it's dirty. Yeah. But anyways, we'll wrap it up with that. Impeccable with your words. And, truthful. Uh, transparent. Today is Tuesday? Yep. Next Tuesday, we'll do the uh, the second agreement. Sounds good to me. Thank you. <laughs>